These dots in the middle of the Saudi Arabian desert can even be seen from space. They went for crops that were highly productive in agriculture, but also thirsty, demanding a lot of water. So your sustainability of the system is very low. Saudi Arabia is well known for its harsh climate and little rainfall. The region has been far from green due to its composition of largely desert and somewhat dry lands. Surprisingly, the desert is swiftly transforming into rich farmlands, a development that even experts find surprising. What is happening in this desert? How can such a dry land become so productive suddenly? In today's video, we'll show how the desert is rapidly turning into fertile farmlands. Keep watching to the end as you will be astonished by learning about it. With a geographical area of 2.14 million square kilometers, Saudi Arabia is the 14th biggest nation in the world and is more than one-fifth the size of America. This makes it nearly as big as Western Europe. Saudi Arabia, which covers much of the northern and central Arabian Peninsula, is a young nation with a rich history. It is bounded to the north by Jordan, Iraq, and Kuwait, to the east by the Persian Gulf, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and Oman, to the southeast by a section of Oman, to the south and southwest by Yemen, and to the west by the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aqaba. The Hejaz, located on the western highlands near the Red Sea, is the cradle of Islam and the location of Islam's holy cities, Mecca and Medina. The Najd Highland, a vast desert zone occupied by nomadic tribes until recently, is located in the country's geographic heartland. To the east, along the Persian Gulf, lie the country's vast oil reserves, which have connected Saudi Arabia with petroleum prosperity since the 1960s. Religion, tribalism, and unending riches have all driven the country's subsequent history. It is the 14th largest nation in the world, covering around 2 million square kilometers. The government occupies around four-fifths of the Arabian Peninsula. On the other hand, Saudi Arabia is one of the few nations on Earth that does not have a single permanent river and receives fewer than 150 millimeters of rain each year. In the early 1960s, Saudi Arabia had just 400 square kilometers of agricultural land. Now, it has 35,000 square kilometers, which is larger than the Netherlands and more than three times the size of Qatar. It's puzzling how they increased the quantity of arable land in such a short period. Saudi Arabia's agricultural success has been astounding over the last three decades. This is a huge accomplishment in a country that receives only four inches of rain per year, one of the lowest rates in the world. Saudi Arabia housed the world's largest oil reserves. In March 1938, oil was discovered at 1,440 meters in Saudi Arabia's dam oil field. The country controls approximately 17% of the world's recognized petroleum reserves today. A liter of drinking water in Saudi Arabia costs more than a liter of oil. With an estimated oil reserve of 75 billion barrels, the Gawar oil field is the world's largest resource with enough funds to fill 4.8 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. Notedly, water is a significant issue in Saudi Arabia. The 1970s saw the kingdom's first severe agricultural development. The government launched a comprehensive program to promote modern farming technology, build rural roads and irrigation networks, build storage and export facilities, and encourage agricultural research and training institutions. As a result, the production of all basic foods has increased dramatically. Saudi Arabia is now self-sufficient in a variety of foods because of the enormous quantities of meat, milk, and eggs. Food imports have dropped correspondingly as food output has grown. In reality, Saudi Arabia today exports wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, vegetables, and flowers to markets all over the globe. Early in the program, extensive dairy, meat, poultry, and egg production were all established. And by 1985, local farms supplied domestic demand for several formerly imported items. 
The kingdom today features some of the biggest and most advanced dairy farms in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia is third in the world in terms of per capita consumption of chicken meat, with an average per capita intake of about 50 kilos per year. Chicken consumption in the kingdom amounts to around 1.38 million tons per year. According to preliminary remarks by engineer Abdul Rahman Al Fadli, Saudi Arabia's Minister of Environment, Water and Agriculture, the kingdom ranks first in the Arab world in chicken production. The ministry and the Agricultural Development Fund seek to boost it to 80% by 2025 by infusing 17 billion rials in investments. The country's milk production rate is one of the highest in the world, at 1,800 gallons per cow per year. While conventional offshore fishing has continually boosted fish production, the kingdom is looking for methods to improve the capture and promote more private involvement. Fish farms were also growing in number. These farms were created in both on-land and at-sea environments. The establishment of these fish farms led to the production of seafood, shrimps in particular, were very valuable to the country. The vast majority are located along Saudi Arabia's Red Sea coast, where shrimp farming has proven very lucrative. For instance, the national shrimp company Al Rubain operates a farm south of Jeddah, which Saudi hydrobiologists and marine engineers administer. The company's shrimp, including the prized black tiger kind, are mostly shipped to the United States of America and Japan. Furthermore, thanks to the administration's efforts, Saudi Arabia quickly transitioned from a wheat importer to an exporter of the commodity. The building of wheat soils in 1978 resulted in a wheat surplus in 1984. Currently, the main grain producing areas of Tobruk and Kazim produce approximately 3.6 tons of wheat per acre. Other grains, such as barley and millet, were also grown. Grain production eventually grew to such an enormous scale that it had to be reduced to conserve water. On the other hand, the kingdom has expanded fruit and vegetable output by upgrading agricultural practices and the highways linking farmers to urban customers. Saudi Arabia is a significant fruit and vegetable exporter to its neighbors. Watermelons, grapes, citrus, fruits, onions, and tomatoes are among its most prolific crops. The Al Hikma Research Station in Jizan, the country's well watered southwest, produces tropical fruits such as pineapples, pawpaws, bananas, mangoes, and guavas. This agricultural development has transformed the country's traditional diet by delivering previously inconceivable local foods. Dates are no longer the crucial staple that they once were for Saudis. However, they remain an important supplemental meal. Much of the yearly output of dates, which is believed to be over half a million tons and contains roughly 450 distinct types, is utilized for international humanitarian aid. Due to significant expenditures in projects promoting cutting-edge farming technology and rural infrastructure, Saudi Arabia's agricultural industry has been transformed. Despite having an enormous oil wealth, the Saudi government did not sit back and do nothing. Instead, they spent the country's fortune building productive land for the public. In the 1970s, the government launched programs to promote modern agricultural technology and rural infrastructure, and as a result, the production of all critical crops increased significantly. Notably, they not only attained self-sufficiency, but also expanded agricultural exports dramatically. Several manufacturers, including one in Al Hassa, are entirely devoted to production for overseas charities, donating thousands of tons of dates each year to relieve hunger and food shortages, principally via the World Food Program, WFP, of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. Many nations have benefited directly from Saudi Arabia's World Food Program food aid, and the kingdom ranks second only to the United States in terms of contributions to the program. The rise of Saudi Arabia's agriculture industry in recent years may be ascribed significantly to a slew of government projects. Some of these services included the provision of low-interest financing and technical and support services. In addition, the agricultural industry has benefited from reduced water, fuel, and energy costs, and duty-free imports of raw materials and equipment. 
Foreign people or corporations who enter into joint ventures with Saudi individuals or companies are tax-free for up to 10 years. Furthermore, investment laws in existence since April 2000 provided further advantages. The Ministry of Agriculture is the primary institution enforcing agricultural policies and assisting farmers with research and extension. Another agency that helps is the Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank, SAAB. It is in charge of distributing subsidies and making no interest loans. GSFMO, or the Grain Silos and Flour Mills Organization, was founded in 1972 to aid in the spreading agriculture throughout the country by acquiring and storing wheat, building flour mills, and making animal feed. To stimulate private investment in agriculture, Saudi Arabia has dedicated significant financial resources to improve highways that connect producing regions with consumer markets. Furthermore, the Land Distribution and Reclamation Program, established in 1968, intends to distribute fallow land for free, generally in small plots, to boost agricultural and livestock output and expand the area under cultivation. Within two to five years, beneficiaries must develop at least one quarter of the land surface. The farmer gains complete ownership of the land upon compliance. Under the development plans, the government continues to support new farmers in constructing capital-intensive projects, specifically focusing on diversification and increased efficiency. The government sponsors and helps research programs to produce fresh food crops, boost harvests, and develop plant lines with improved insect resistance to enhance farm output. Local farmers and scientists work together at Saudi universities and colleges' agricultural research centers on these projects. The world's largest continuous sand desert, the Rubal Kali, is situated in Saudi Arabia and covers an area of 650,000 square kilometers, larger than the combined borders of Holland, Belgium, and France. Even though most of the country is desert or semi-arid, it has a long coast stretching from the Persian Gulf towards the Red Sea. On the other hand, water is both scarce and critical owing to the country's fast development and the resulting rise in water demand. Consequentially, the government looked for innovative measures to guarantee it had enough water to meet its growing demand. Saudi Arabia's water supply mostly depends on aquifers, which store water in massive subterranean lakes and reservoirs. The government undertook a significant effort in the 1970s to identify, map, and estimate the capacity of such aquifers. Consequentially, tens of thousands of deep tube wells have been sunk in the most promising urban and agricultural areas. Recycled water is becoming an increasingly common water source. Agricultural areas and urban parks are watered with recycled water to achieve this goal. Together, these activities led to the transformation of enormous swaths of desert into productive farmland. From fewer than 400,000 acres in 1976 to millions of acres by the 21st century, land under cultivation has risen dramatically. However, the agricultural achievements achieved by Saudi Arabia are exceptional and constitute an excellent achievement for the country. Their progress undoubtedly inspires other nations with challenging climates to become self-sufficient. What are your opinions on this phenomenon? Leave a comment below. Stay sound till we return with another exciting video for you.